You probably already know that Game Development Virtual Machine is a specialized virtual machine that comes pre-installed with game developer tools and game engines like Unreal Engine from Epic Games. You can use Game Dev VM to develop games from any computer, regardless of specs, anywhere you are by harnessing the power of the cloud. Today on Microsoft Game Dev Connect, Ben Humphrey is here to show me how it works. Hi, I'm Joanna Lee, and welcome to Microsoft Game Dev Connect. I'm here with Ben Humphrey, and he's going to show me how to optimize developing games using the Game Development Virtual Machine, or Game Dev VM for short. Ben, can you tell me more about Game Dev VM and how is it different from a regular VM? Hey, Joanna, sure. The Game Dev VM is a configurable VM image in Microsoft Azure. It's a regular VM with just more capabilities. It also has many of the common tools that are used by game developers already pre-packaged so they can spin up a really powerful workstation in Azure. It comes with Microsoft Visual Studio, has a game engine like Unreal Engine 5 by Epic Games, source control clients like Perforce or Git, uh, artist tooling, GPU drivers, and group policies already set up for you to now enable things like RDP acceleration and Xbox controller support. We also have Stripe disks and mounting file shares already ready to go. It saves developers or IT admins hours by not having to configure that game dev workstation from scratch. So really, we think of this as reducing that setup time from hours to minutes. How is the game dev VM optimized for game developers and game development? Yeah, so our philosophy for the game dev VM is to provide you with that 85% of the tools that game developers need. You can choose what you'd like to install. They're available after you spin up a VM. Uh, the Game Dev VM is designed so that you can bring your own special secret sauce and add any of the tooling configurations that you want on top of that. The Game Dev VM allows you to co-locate massive assets and code repositories in Azure, and then remote into powerful workstations to do development and builds. It enables you to do development remotely and supports geo-distributed teams who are working on a single title. Game Dev VM is optimized for today's developers to deploy and build games by using the power of Microsoft Cloud. It's awesome that the Game Dev VM is so configurable and supports large distributed teams around the world to work remotely together. Does this mean that the game source code needs to live in Azure in order for me to use Game Dev VM? Not at all. You can pull your source code from anywhere, even on-premises, if you have network and connectivity to that location, of course. Uh, to get the best experience in the cloud, we recommend that you replicate your assets or repositories to Azure using something like a proxy or edge server. That's wonderful. I can keep my source code on-prem if I wanted to. I love having this flexibility and option. Let's say uh, if I decided to replicate my source code in Azure, I would be very concerned about security. Can you tell me more about the Game Dev VM security features? Sure. The great thing about deploying the Game Dev VM in Azure is that we provide a full suite of security options and policies that you can customize, like virtual networks that allow full control over what IP addresses and ports can access your assets in the cloud. On deployment, you can turn off any public IPs and allow only VPN or express route connectivity where needed. Also, with integration into solutions like Azure Security Center and Azure Active Directory, you now have Microsoft constantly monitoring access and patterns of behavior that can automatically warn or even block access if something is found to be suspicious. Oh, this is great. Game Dev VM can have the same security features that regular VMs have to keep my source code safe. I want to understand the different ways that Game Dev VM could be used. If I wanted to keep using my dev workstation like how I'm used to, but I'm still interested in harnessing the power of Azure, what are my options with Game Dev VM? Yeah, you can use the Game Dev VM as a build server instead of a development workstation. And you can orchestrate pulling down your code with that, building it with large virtual machines, or even scaling out to hundreds of cores if you're using something like Incredibuild. Let me show you a slide on what a build pipeline might look like in Azure with the Game Development Virtual Machine. So in this example, we could certainly do it in a single region, but let's 
blow it up to three regions and actually have something that's a little more realistic. So for instance, in Azure A, we might have developers who are logging into the cloud into the game dev VM, and they're using the whatever protocol makes sense. And they're using Unreal Engine, for instance, to do their game development. And then they're actually checking out and checking in their code into a Perforce proxy, which then connects into Azure Region B for the main commit server for Perforce. And as you can see in the center, we have the game dev VM as the build server. And from there, we can use things like Incredibuild to orchestrate spinning up hundreds of cores to build that uh, a game. And then we can take that and store it into blob storage where it can be shared across multiple different regions or even pulled down to on-prem for something maybe if you have, you're doing console development and you want to be able to uh, pull that down using something like AZ copy to then quickly get that down to your dev kit and test, or even maybe an automated test farm that uh, could actually test your game for you. And then over coming over to Azure Region C, we can then replicate that build over to a blob storage account over there. And then we can have things like maybe people like testers could come in and use the uh, game dev VM to then use that build to do their testing all in Azure. Nice, this is really neat. Very interesting to see all the different components in the pipeline design and how they're put together. I'm also keen to see how I can spin up a VM. Can you walk through that as well? Yes. Let's jump over to the Azure portal and walk through the options to configure and spin up a game dev VM. All right, so Joanna, we are in the portal right now for Azure, and I've gone up and already pre-searched for game dev right here, and it popped up the Azure Game Development Virtual Machine. And you're going to see the screen, and we're going to hit Create to start walking through what the UI looks like to see all the different configurations for this virtual machine that we have for you. So certainly we want to select a subscription, our resource group, also the region that we want to deploy to. And this is really important when we think about latency. So you're going to want to deploy your virtual machine as close as possible to an Azure region. In this case, I'm in South Central US because I'm in Dallas. So that's a, that's a great spot for me. Uh, you can also choose whether you want a build server or just GPUs for a workstation. This is where you would choose your different uh, GPU settings or maybe build server set, uh, settings for that SKU of that virtual machine. And then just like when you spin up a normal Windows machine, you're going to select all this stuff and type in what makes sense for you for your virtual machine name and your login and password. And then also we have Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019 as selections, Windows 11 and Windows Server 2022 are just right around the corner. In this case, maybe we'll choose 2019. And I'm going to go to the next one, which is the important one of which game engine do you want to choose? And we can choose no game engine install, which means maybe you already have your source code and you want to pull it down yourself, maybe from something like Perforce or Git, and you don't need to have a binary of, say, something like Unreal Engine on there. But if you do and you're ready to start get, uh, coding right away, then that's where you could choose the Unreal Engine 5 or 4.27 with more versions coming as they come out. Now, I'm choosing Unreal Engine 5 and all the different tooling that's associated with that and the things that we would care about as an Unreal Engine developer come right in here and, and give you links to all those. So the different IDEs and the different plugins that you'd use, so Unreal Engine VS plugin. Um, also, if you wanted pixel streaming, we build that right in with the signaling server on that so that you can just run your app and actually share that out, which is a great collaboration option. And then also Perforce and GitHub options. With Perforce, we're able to actually pull down and sync a repo right from uh, here so that when you deploy it, you can come back and you know, grab a coffee or so, and then that source code could already be pulled down for you depending on your project size. All right, Joanna, so now that we've actually spun up a virtual machine, let's see what that looks like. I already have one that's already ready to go, so we don't have to wait for that. But we're finding it takes about 6 to 12 minutes, depending on what you've chosen from the Azure portal in terms of your configuration. So as you can see, we have things like Unreal Engine in here installed, Visual Studio, Perforce, even Blender and Quixel Bridge and then a bunch of other features and tools that uh, you also have in other folders. So let's actually look at, say, Perforce. If I go to my Perforce down here, I already have Perforce that I've gone in and connected to my project and my repo, and I've pulled that down. And we can even go into Unreal Engine. And I've already reloaded that just so we could save some time. And I can go in here and click around, and you can see the interactivity that that gives. And now let's actually hit play and see what it feels like to have AAA content streaming and playing in the cloud. So now we are running the application. I'm just going to walk around here so you can see the interactivity. So this feels like it's just right on my desktop. I don't see any perceivable lag. It's pretty good experience. And so uh, this is uh, something that is totally doable in the cloud. You can have a great experience. And we think that many other game developers are going to like doing remote development in Azure. Hopefully, Joanna, that gives you a nice overview of how the game dev VM can help developers more quickly leverage the benefits of Azure. 
Yes, I learned a lot more about Game Dev VM today. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I hope this video was useful for you all and you've learned something new today. Thank you for your time and see you again soon.